Good morning and welcome to Southcote Family Church. It's an interesting expression, isn't it? Welcome to Southcote Family Church because I'm in an empty building. The building, though, never really was Southcote Family Church. We've always said the people are the church and we are part of a united church that meet across the world, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, whether they're healthy in their living room or dying on a hospital bed, they are part of the united body of Christ. And though outwardly we might be wasting away, we might see decay, inwardly we are being renewed by the Holy Spirit. This morning we're meeting as churches in streets where churches have never met before. We are worshipping in places where maybe worship hasn't been heard by our neighbours ever before. This is an opportunity for us to come together in worship. Palm Sunday, a huge crowd came outside Jerusalem to welcome Jesus Christ, to say, Hosanna in the highest. Did they really know who they were singing Hosanna to? I wonder if our neighbours do. I wonder if you do. I wonder if any of us have really gotten to know Jesus. Well, this, this Sunday morning, we begin our journey through Holy Week to Easter Sunday. We begin actually the most traumatic week of Jesus Christ's life. Up to his death on Good Friday, through to the resurrection on Easter Sunday. We're going to journey together this week with this Sunday service, but also daily casts that I will be putting on YouTube. Daily thoughts, just five minutes to help us think through the bigger picture. Well, this morning we're going to have some praise and worship. We're going to have some scripture being read and we're also going to have our message, which will be on a separate video, which you can access after this service. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. We have no building. It's almost as if the building has been cast into the sea. But we pray in faith this morning, Lord. We pray in faith that you will unite your people by your spirit. We pray in faith that Christians around the world will be singing this morning, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Great is he who is the King of kings. Lord Jesus, we pray this morning that those who are in suffering and pain, struggling with this virus, will know your healing touch. We will know what true healing is, Lord, where we are at one with our Lord and Saviour. We pray, Lord, that this morning as we worship and as we sing from our living rooms, Lord, we'll remember we are united with millions around the world. I pray this morning, Lord, that we may truly worship you in spirit and truth as we welcome you into our living rooms, into our homes, into our mobile phones, wherever we're listening to this today, to the glory of your name. Amen. Now we're going to have our first scripture reading brought to you by myself and my wife. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you doing this, say the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt tied outside in the street. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead of those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thanks to modern technology, we have the ability to record music and to play it 
for you this morning. Thank you, Kath, for playing the two piano pieces we are going to have this morning. And thank you, Graham Allen, for uploading them online so I can uh, put lyrics to them. And we're going to sing our first song here, which is Come, Now is the Time to Worship. And don't be afraid, sing loudly. It doesn't matter now, does it? Sing loudly. In fact, it matters more than ever. Sing loudly, because this is singing praise to our God and King. Good morning everybody, fellow family members of Sycott Family Church. Well none of us could have predicted that we would be sharing in this way today. The past few weeks have seen a very different way of life and at a time when we need to pull together we're being kept apart physically. We're forced to distance ourselves from our friends, our family and all those that we would normally have contact with. Some of us are blessed in that we have husbands and wives or other family members living with us, while others are having to deal with this isolation alone. Please use your prayer diaries to pray for each other. And please remember especially those who are isolated and alone at home. Those members of our extended church family, 
who are missing coming to the church, lunch club, coffee morning attendees, and of course, our toddler family. Some of us know who our own children and their children how challenging this time is for mums and dads, juggling work commitments, and not only caring for their children, but also home educating them. For those of our toddler families living in flats with limited indoor space and no garden, we lift these up very specially in our prayers for their endurance and patience. For their, those undergoing treatment or recovering from treatment or having to miss vital medical appointments, we think of Graham, who is now over halfway through his treatment. We think of Cass, Rosie, Shirley and many, many others. Whatever our circumstances, we need to reach out to others and have them reach out to us. Never have we used our phones as much and never have we had to rescue as much as iPads, laptops, YouTube, WhatsApp, Zoom, mention just a few. On this we day of great rejoicing, the Lord Jesus Christ, when we're we welcome you, our King and Saviour, we also walk in the shadow of your cross. Hosanna, ways. we cry, blessed are you who come in God's name to save us. Hosanna, strengthen our faith on this time so that when the time comes to carry the cross, we might still call out to you with heartfelt praise. Give us the grace and courage to follow you this holy week, from death to resurrection, from darkness to the fullness of light. We need you, Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Hosanna. And our usual Thursday prayer meeting continues on Zoom. And of course, next Friday, or this coming Friday, is Good Friday, and we're invited to join together at 10.30, again on YouTube. And we'll be sharing communion together from our own home. Easter Sunday service will be at 10.30. So church is still continuing, but in a very different form, and it's vital to our well-being that we remain in touch with each other. Please continue to phone one another to offer help and support, maybe to share a hymn or a song that you found that be extremely helpful to you. Or maybe even helpful hints as to which exercise would you have to try on TV. A thought came to me this week. Every day is precious and has been given to us from God. So it's important that we use each day wisely. Use it or lose it. We'll never get these days back, so make the most of them. Let's do the very best we can. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Father, it is wonderful that these words are true of the great Creator, Ruler and Sustainer of all things, who has all our times in his hands. With the psalmist we want to joyfully proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Every day is your gift to us, and whatever it brings we are so glad that nothing can separate us from your love for us in our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave himself for us on the cross, dying that we may have life and hope. Father in heaven, receive our praise. Father, your love and faithfulness is never in question. We cannot say the same for us. We confess our failure to trust you, our readiness to doubt your love, our weakness in the face of temptation, and our willfulness in turning away from what you ask of us. As your mercy never comes to an end, we ask you to have mercy on us and forgive and cleanse us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. Father, we are so grateful that in the difficult situation we find ourselves, 
There are so many acts of kindness and generosity, large and small. Thank you for every offer to get shopping, pick up medication or bring a meal, for every phone call, email, FaceTime or letter, for every expression of support and encouragement. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. The challenge facing our government is immense. Grant wisdom to our ministers and their advisers as they steer us through this crisis. May their planning and organisation be truly efficient and effective. May the different schemes they set up run smoothly, especially those designed to support those who are facing financial difficulties, whether individuals or businesses. May they be easily accessible and provide the best assistance as soon as possible. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. The strain on our health service is the greatest it has ever been. Thank you for all the huge efforts and costly sacrifices doctors, nurses and hospital support staff are making to care for the sick and dying and those looking after our elderly and infirm in care homes. Give them the strength, endurance and rest to enable them to serve as they, do, as they so desperately want to. May they receive all they need, the space, equipment, medication and especially the personal protection. May the testing program quickly release as many of them back into service as possible. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. This is a distress shared by so many other nations. Our hearts go out to those who have good health care systems and yet find themselves overwhelmed. Italy, Spain, USA and in time even ourselves. We have a particular concern for those countries who have far fewer resources those who may also have large groups of refugees within their borders. Greece, Somalia, Turkey, Syria, Yemen. May those international bodies and relief organisations find resources to help and supply them as soon as possible. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. Father, in and through all the limitations and restrictions we as a church are experiencing, please continue your work in us. Help us to persevere. Grant us courage and endurance. Enable us by your Holy Spirit to grow in our faith, to hold to your word, to pray, continually looking to you so that we do not slip into worry, fear and hopelessness. Keep before us those in our fellowship who need your especial care, that we may do whatever we can to encourage them. Keep us loving and grateful both to you and all who care for us. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those in our community who are facing the stress of caring for their children in the main confined to home. Grant them the energy to keep going, the imagination to teach and entertain, and above all, continuing patience. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. Father, our hearts are heavy for all those around this world who have had loved ones suddenly snatched away without an opportunity to be with them in their last moments. Hold their hand and speak their love to them. We grieve with them. Lord of all comfort, draw near to them in their heartbreak and bring your solace and peace. Father in heaven, Hear our prayer. Please join with me in praying to our Heavenly Father in the words our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our second reading takes place after Palm Sunday. I would like to actually explore the whole of Mark 11, but we won't have time for that this morning. But we're going to look particularly at Jesus' interaction with a tree and a temple. A tree and a big building. So here's our second Bible reading this morning, taken from Mark 11. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing the distant a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. As he told them, he said, Is it not written? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his, di Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look! The fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus said. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their hearts, but believes that what they, will, what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their hearts, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, Forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all those who have given generously over the years to the work of Southgate Family Church. In the current situation, we cannot give in the same way, but there are ways of giving. If you are still interested, please get in touch with Graham through email, phone, or through our Facebook page to explore the various ways you can still give and contribute. I also want to say thank you to all those who serve faithfully in this church, whether it is through prayer, acts of service, or through any other means. Please continue to pray for the work, and please continue to pray that God's will be done here in Southcote, in Reading, on earth, as it is in heaven. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us this morning for our Palm Sunday service. It's certainly been a very different experience trying to do a service in this way, and certainly we're learning. The learning curve for myself has been how to use a mobile phone and a selfie stick a little bit more creatively than I have. But it's interesting, isn't it, that as we turn cameras on ourselves, we shouldn't be looking at ourselves. We need to be looking more at Jesus Christ. This is the person whom we need to turn to at times like this. It's his cross, his death, his resurrection. That means everything. It's not about me. It's not about Southcote Family Church. It's not about you. It's not about the coronavirus. It's all about Jesus. When Jesus came in to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, people, they were expecting something a little bit different. They were expecting a king who came on a cult. They were expecting a warrior who came in peace. They were expecting him to overturn the Romans. He overturned tables in their own temple. Jesus has come not to pander to the wishes of the world, but to say to the world, Everything's not okay, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the one who brings life. I am the one who brings redemption and restoration and renewal. I'm going to read a Palm Sunday prayer. It's short, it's brief, it's easily found online. And then if you follow the uh, link in the description box below, you will find the message this morning. Otherwise, search the way of the cross building towards the cross. Or just go to our channel and the video will be there. Let's pray. On this day of great rejoicing, Lord Jesus Christ, when we welcome you as our King and Saviour, we also walk in the shadow of your cross. Hosanna, we cry. Blessed are you who come in God's name to save us. Hosanna! Strengthen our faith on this Palm Sunday so that when the times come to carry the cross, we might still call out to you with heartfelt praise. Give us the grace and the courage to follow you this holy week. From death to resurrection, from darkness to the fullness of light, we need you, Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Hosanna.